I'm going to take you through the history of winglets from the past to the future. End plates or winglets were theorized in 1897. That was the first patent. First airplanes flying were 1910. End plates have been on airplanes since then. But they really came into vogue in the 70s when fuel efficiency was required because fuel prices was going up. So winglets themselves actually artificially increase the aspect ratio so they make the wing look longer and a long wing has less induced drag. So as a structural engineer, my job helping other companies put winglets on airplanes that hadn't had winglets, there's always this compromise. You, you compromise the aerodynamic benefit and efficiency with the added structural weight that you've got to put in the wing because all, all along the wing, when you put a winglet on, it changes the lift distribution, and because the bending is higher, you have to put metal in there. So this always bothered me for years, and one day I had an epiphany. What we can do is turn off the winglet, aerodynamically disengage the winglet during high limit load or high G events, so we didn't have to reinforce the wing. So we're gonna save hundreds of pounds, like on this plane. 500 pounds we're gonna save. So winglet 2.0, is the addition of a load alleviating device, a tax, Tamarack Active Camber Surface, to the winglet so that we can put these winglets directly on the airframe without modifying the wing. That's what winglet 2.0 is, it's flying around the world, uh, it's certified, we have a contract with Cessna, we're really, really excited about that. Let's talk about winglet 3.0. Winglet 3.0 is the next generation of winglets above are already amazing 2.0. So our winglets get three to four times the efficiency of a traditional 100-year-old passive winglet. And so let me take you in the future. What we're gonna do on this behind me is you're gonna see five patents that we have already as we're building our thicket. One is the shape of the winglet itself, the leaning edge, the trailing edge. It's a big deal the way that's shaped to give you the aerodynamic benefit. One of the other things we're doing is with our trailing edge device, which is a load alleviating device, we can use that for flutter suppression. So instead of putting heavy ballast ahead of the elastic axis, like they do on the 737, we don't have to do that. We can actually change the wing twist itself with our device also. So that's in making that wing, for that condition, the, the most optimal shape. We also have a stall strip that we put on the leading edge, which is very beneficial to reducing the weight of the whole area because the highest loads, the most critical loads on the winglet are from side slips. So if we have a stall strip, when the aircraft is in a yaw angle, the load is reduced dramatically. And then probably the biggest one is the combination of the toe angle of the winglet itself and the droop of the trailing edge device, the tacks. Those combined do more than the individual sum of, the, of each. So if you get 2%, for instance, out of one and two out of the other, together they get, you get five. So this is why the airlines and the military, everyone's excited about it now because they're seeing the next generation winglets and how we get three to four times the efficiency of a passive winglet. Thank you.